that's not so strange because in the, all the Middle Eastern empires for hundreds of years had gone farther than that. Uh, they would uh, uh, say, hey, we want to make you feel at home in the Assyrian or the Babylonian Empire, and uh, maybe we can even help you. The, the Persians were big on this, though others had done it. And in the Bible itself, we read that the emperor of Persia sent um, Ezra, who, though Jewish, was a court official in Persia. You go back there to the community of the Jews in, in Jerusalem with our authority, and he went back with the, the Torah in some form, the, the laws, but he got a lot of opposition from the native Jews and Samaritans there. But he had the authority of the state, he and Nehemiah, and they imposed this. Wow, it's interesting that from that point on in history, Judaism looks a whole lot like Persian Zoroastrianism. Uh, and the Sadducees, uh, whose name basically means councilmen, uh, comes from the same word as syndicate. Uh, they were the syndicoi, the Sadducees. They, uh, they said, where did you get this stuff about the resurrection of the dead? What is this about Satan as the arch enemy of God? In the Old Testament, he was God's agent. Uh, where did you get this business about history being predestined in one epoch after another and this apocalyptic judgment and uh, all this stuff? Uh, oh, of course, Persia. You got all that from Zoroastrians. And in fact, you guys are not really Jews anymore. You're Zoroastrians, or as they're still called today in India, Parsis. And that's probably what Pharisee meant. Y you guys have adopted an alien religion. So the Pharisees and the Sadducees could never agree because of that. Well, what these guys are uh, suggesting with Rome in effect, creating our Christianity is not substantially different than what the Persians did with Judaism or earlier Middle Eastern empires. It's not fantastic in the least. What, what does it mean when uh, in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians the writer says, I planted the seed of the church, uh, and Apollo or Apollos, whatever you want to call him, same thing in Greek, uh, he watered it, and it was God who gave the growth. Uh, well, it, in, in Acts and uh, implicitly in 1 Corinthians, Apollo was the, or Apollos usually here, uh, was a kind of co-worker, colleague with with Paul. Didn't travel around with them, but went to some of the same places. And perhaps so did Cephas, who is usually thought to be a, a Peter, but we don't really know. And he's trying to iron out factional differences. It, 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 earlier in the epistle, it says, I hear that uh, there are factions among you, and some say, I belong to Paul, I belong to Apollos, I belong to Cephas. You know, what is this? Was Christ divided? Uh, was Paul crucified for you? you, you should, oh, and it says, some say, I am of Christ. Oh, boy, is that interesting. You mean, there were, there were people that put Christ on the same level as Cephas, Apollos, and Paul? Uh, was, was Christ not the ultimate? Well, I don't want to get into that. But uh, if they were contemporaries, his point seems to be, look, we're all on the same team. Uh, don't set us against each other. And uh, one may do a better job than the other, but that's for God to decide. He says, not, not you. You have no business judging him. Uh, but uh, von Manen pointed out that this seems to be... Uh, do you say telescoping, if you're contracting the time period, that this is one of many places where there is a retrospective tone and uh, it looks like someone is looking back on the ministry of Paul and others as if they're already over and you can sum it up that, uh, yeah, Paul was first, Apollos was second, and, and so forth. And uh, similarly, Paul says, I think to the Thessalonians, uh, remember the traditions as I gave them to you. Traditions? I mean, th this is supposed to be written at the dawn of Christianity. Traditions? Uh, in Philippians and Colossians, there are Christian hymns. 
isn't this kind of early for, for people to have uh, uh, hymns or creeds? There, there are certain things you can tell or by the, the meter and, and so forth that they were parts of creeds, uh, like the later Apostles' Creed. Isn't this a bit early for, for, for these kind of ecclesiastical uh, accoutrements and uh, the mentions of bishops and I, I, this seems like uh, early Pentecostalism. Uh, don't doesn't this bespeak? I mean, you get that impression from Acts. It's a brand new thing. They're on fire for Christ, but it's only a later period of consolidation. When, as uh, Weber pointed out, where you get the church organization with bishops and deacons and all this. This sure seems like somebody is trying to read. Uh, the uh, the later church uh, back into the the very beginning with Paul uh, and um, so the and the the thing with the Apollos and Paul that seems like another one of these you can't prove it but uh, it, it seems to sometimes there are jurisdictional disputes implied in these where he says I and Paul says I uh, stayed out of the mission field of others and I wish they'd stay out of mine. I uh, may be paranoid, but that sounds to me like the kind of thing we have when churches were jockeying for position by saying, you know, uh, Apollos might have founded yours, but Paul founded ours. He's a greater apostle, so you ought to believe what we say, what our bishops teach. I have a sneak and hunch that's what's going on there. Uh, so uh, there's a lot to that one little verse. and uh, But I have to admit it kind of depends on what lenses are in your glasses as you read them. It's hard to tell.